Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome yet again to another episode of Dinner Guide. I am your host Chef Andy and as usual I've got something really really good for all of you. I took a beautiful trip to Rwanda a few years back and I actually came back with some very very beautiful African inspired dishes that revolve around some of the most very rarest of ingredients to actually throw into one pot. Today I'm going to be making a one pot matoke with groundnuts and I'll begin by introducing the ingredients in front of us today. So right from the farthest end, I've got some uh, parsley there. I've also got some bay leaves, some uh, stock cubes, a bit of some curry powder, and two red medium-sized onions. I'm also going to be using some fresh carrots, some uh, fresh uh, ginger root, a bit of thyme, two large tomatoes, and a few cloves of garlic. I'm also going to be using some oven roasted peanuts, which you can be able to do yourselves or just purchase from the store. I'm also going to be using some green bananas here, a bit of some fresh coriander, salt and pepper to taste. Now we're going to take a short break, allowing you to grab everything that you need for this very show. And if you're going to be taking notes, then this is a, this is a chance for you to grab those. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in, we've just been introducing the ingredients before us today. And I did mention that this is actually a Rwandese inspired dish. I managed to learn this from a very beautiful old lady. And she did insist that I should actually come and introduce it to all of you at home. So we're going to basically start off by cooking our bananas. So very, very simply, it's only a matter of peeling them, and I'll, I will share a small hint with you that I learned on, that, on the other end. Once you, when you decide to actually work with green bananas, it's actually advisable that you always use a bit of oil on your hands. This will actually avoid the sap from sticking to the edges of your fingers and making it hard to wash off. So one particular beautiful pointer, rinse, uh, rather coat your hands with a bit of oil. It could be vegetable, it could be olive oil and give it a nice beautiful coating but not too much to, uh, to actually avoid for you to be able to hold your knife. And then second of all, once you peel them, throw them in some water immediately, rinse them once and allow for them to sit in there right until the point you're going to cook them. Another thing as well to share is it's very, very important to pick the right mature bananas. There are very much mature, immature bananas out there and by immature I mean they're very, very narrow, hard to peel and their flesh is actually very, very little compared to the peel. So actually make sure when you're looking for green bananas, make sure to get the biggest, juiciest ones you can find. Now before we continue, I'm also now going to start preparing some of the condiments that will be going into our pot there. And it's very, very simple. We're going to start off by chopping up some red onion. So just chop that halfway lengthways and proceed to cut that into some half moon size. And discard the roots. Proceed to do the same for the other piece. Chuck that away. We're just going to work with one. Next up, a bit of some fresh garlic. So add about four to five cloves into your pestle and mortar, or you can also chop them very, very finely. If you're going to be using a pestle and mortar, very handy to also add a bit of salt in there. It will give you quite a bit of grip, and all you need to do is begin to pound. Once they're pounded down, begin to mince them by Take just by using your pestle, just keep going around the bowl. And this will actually allow for you to really break down that garlic. And once done, proceed to add that into your pot. You 
it may become a little bit sticky so always have a spoon handy and be sure to empty completely everything out of your pestle be sure not to waste any of that garlic beautiful so we're going to allow that to continue we're also going to just chuck a little bit of oil in there and uh, using a wooden spoon proceed to mix your garlic in a circular motion and cook this right until you actually notice that the garlic just begins to turn into a nice golden brown color Next up, add your onions. And continue to cook. Right, while that continues to fry, you can begin to grab your carrots, add them into the pot. We're also going to be using a bit of this beautiful ginger root. So very, very simply, a simple technique that I like to use to peel my ginger in place of actually peeling it with a knife, which will actually incur a bit of waste. Just grab a spoon, Make sure to hold it really, really well and just, turn, just invert it over, over your index finger. And using your, fing, uh, your thumb, while holding your thumb right at the back of the root, begin to just core off the skin of the ginger. Very gently going around the root. Making sure to discard any traces of skin from the ginger root. Remember one particular thing about the ginger root is if you actually use it without peeling, it will actually give quite a bit of a gingery, nutty kind of taste and it will actually also darken the mixture. But now particularly for this, we only want the flavors to really come out and to really stand out. So we are going to begin by peeling the ginger root first. And of course, taking your time to go right around the ginger root, removing any traces of the peel. And just proceed to clean your working area. Right, so back to the pot. We're going to proceed to mix onions, garlic and carrot. Continuously mixing your contents. Right now at this stage we're going to add in our tomatoes. Of course making sure to take out those stems and discarding them. Very simple V cut at the edge will do and proceed to quarter your tomatoes into one each chunks and add that to your pot. And proceed to mix everything together, of course frying everything at high heat. Now while this particular process continues, we're going to allow that to continue frying. And while we do that, we're going to grab a fresh pan. And into that you're going to add your bananas and some water. And I'm using about eight pieces of whole green banana. And I'm just going to allow that to simmer on the end here, which will come back to in a little while. 
Allow that to cook uncovered, of course. Be sure to add a little pinch of salt just for flavor. And now you can actually allow that to continue simmering on the side. Proceed to check it about after about another 10 to 15 minutes with a knife or a fork. And as soon as you can be able to prick through right to the center without any, without any difficulty, you should actually be ready to get into the mixture. So just proceed to fry everything in your pot. Of course, giving your tomatoes quite a bit of time to actually break apart. I particularly like to use a nice big chunks of tomato because they will actually be able to be visible at the end and they do actually give quite a good texture to your dish. Right, so you can actually now turn that lower to about medium and we can proceed to add some of the ingredients we had, which are curry powder, some bay leaf, I'm using about three to four pieces. This you can be able to, ac to acquire at your uh, usual retail outlet. And of course, one beef cube. Proceed to mix once more. Of course, using your wooden spoon to break up your stock cube, allowing it to dissolve a little faster. Once that's done, proceed to add just a little bit of your black peppercorn. Just crush them freshly. Give that another mixture. Give it a nice thorough mix. And now all you need to do is proceed to add a little bit of water just to steam your pan to reconstitute all your ingredients and flavors and allow those carrots to really cook through and uh, really get a little softer. So at this stage you should be able to get a nice beautiful curry sensation and aroma coming through your kitchen. I am going to turn that to medium as I mentioned. This is cooking at medium heat. We're going to cover that briefly and allow the carrots to really cook through. And while that continues I'm going to begin to chop some ginger root. So begin by slicing the ginger really thin. And proceed to chop as fine as you can using a very sharp knife of course. Now among the many many beautiful dishes that you may encounter once you decide to go out and eat Rwandese, there is a lot of influence with peanuts in their dishes. They are very also accustomed to eating bananas and this particularly was my personal favorite and it's actually why I decided to share it on the show today. I have also, been, I have also made a bit of alteration to the recipe. Uh, the original traditional recipe would not call for some exotic spices or additions like bay leaf and thyme. But I'm going to be improvising on those because they do actually really lift the flavor of those bananas. And they actually also give the dish a just beautiful, welcoming appeal. So proceed to chop your ginger very finely. Of course, we're going to add garlic to our pot right after this. Remember, garlic, garlic is a very good aromatic um, ingredient to add to any stews or sauces particularly. Gives a very beautiful flavor and pungency. Just going to take off the lid now. Give that a quick mix. And proceed to add our ginger. Now 
allow that to continue cooking on very low heat uncovered and next up we're going to proceed to add our thyme so very very simply if you're using fresh thyme just grab it by the branch and proceed to just really pull off those uh, beautiful leaves making sure of course to not add the stem into your dish remember this you don't want your cl you don't want your diners or your kids to have to actually pull out of their mouth while consuming the dish so be sure to actually not incorporate any of those stems in there just easily using your fingertips pick out the leaves and i'm using about three springs of thyme do the same for the last piece and proceed to discard the stems also grab your parsley and begin to chop that very very finely Now, last but not least, add a little bit more water into your pan. Allow everything to continue cooking at very low heat. And of course, give it one final stir before leaving that to cook on its own. And you can actually put your lid on at this stage. And uh, next up, we're going to go straight into the process of grinding our peanuts. Remember, I use... I prefer to use raw peanuts for particular reasons that it is they do actually taste a little much better when you actually buy them raw and actually cook them yourself. The crispness, the crunch is still fresh and the flavor really comes out quite well. So what we're going to do is grab a blender really quickly. To that we're going to add in our peanuts. So I'm using about a cup full of peanuts. I'm also going to add into that about a quarter cup of oil. And this is just to be able to actually break up the peanuts very, very quickly and really get that beautiful consistency. So what we're basically going to do now is we're going to be blending this and we're going to be turning it into a paste. But before I do so, I am going to just quickly clear the station make some more room to work but i will give you this very very quick and short break to just refresh and when i do come back we'll go to the last and final part of the dish so please don't touch that dial we'll be right back Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who are with us just before we took the break, we were working on a very beautiful groundnut sauce and some matoki on the side. And everything's now just about ready to come out. So I'll begin by turning down the heat on the bananas. And very, very simply, just hold your pan right over the sink and just pour out the excess water. Also going to give our sauce a quick check. Now we're going to proceed to give that a quick mix. Also check for check your carrots for doneness. Give it a give it a quick press with your wooden spoon, and it should actually be a little spongy. That should actually tell you that your carrots are tender and cooked through. Right now, once that's done, remember we were actually pureeing a bit of the peanuts that we had earlier and this is it so i'm just going to open that up and we're going to proceed to add everything to our big pot and for those of you who may actually uh, be having issues with trying to use your blender especially when crushing nuts one particular good addition to that, especially if you're going to be cooking the nuts, it's, uh, 
olive oil or uh, vegetable oil could do the trick or you could actually also add some water puree everything and then strain it and that should do just fine so just proceed to completely empty out the contents in the jug you can set that aside and using your spoon proceed to mix everything together it will actually reconstitute itself into a very very thick paste so I will recommend always have a little bit of water or stock handy I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup and we're going to turn our heat to high and all you need to do at this time is mix everything together allow your sauce to really come together as well You can add a little bit more water to that and proceed to correct your seasoning by adding just a small pinch of salt and of course crush some freshly ground peppercorns. Give it a mix once more making it able for your paste to really come into a much runnier consistency and all you need to do at this stage is turn down your temperature turn down your heat and proceed to add in your bananas and all you need to do with your spoon now is proceed to fold everything in a circular motion being very gentle and making sure not to break your bananas and you can also of course add a bit of potatoes to your mixture as well if you're looking for a balance between the starch and the banana it's also a very good addition other variations to the dish also include adding a bit of arrowroot or sweet potato in half and half ratios to the bananas it also really gives it a very powerful flavor Now our peanut sauce is, our peanut and banana is done. It's actually nice and thick. You can actually really get that beautiful nuttiness from the pan. We're just going to quickly remove that spoon. And using a ladle, we'll proceed to plate. So I'm just going to pour everything into this large, beautiful bowl. Of course, starting first off by pulling out your banana chunks and arranging them on the base of your plate so we've used about eight pieces of bananas this should actually give for a very very good adult size portion or actually it could even also serve for two portions for your kids Remember, it's also a very particular um, dish that is very, very authentic on its own. And this should actually be a very, very crowd puller when, you when your friends and guests visit you for your next dinner party. Now, just to finish this off, always give it a bit of a finish with the herbs if you have some. I'm going to be using coriander for my garnish at the moment. Just proceed to chop that. very roughly and proceed to just garnish with some of that beautifully chopped coriander and that ladies and gentlemen is a very very simple process and technique of cooking your green bananas and incorporating it with some groundnut sauce my name is Chef Andy and I would like to thank you very much for watching and tuning into the show this far. I will also remind you that we are on Facebook. You can proceed to leave your comments, inquiries or any particular comments pertaining the show. We do appreciate your feedback. 
I will also mention for those of you who may actually be having or you may actually have an allergic reaction to peanuts, you can actually avoid adding the peanuts to the dish and you can automatically use any other alternative sauce for the same particular recipe and you should actually be able to, uh, to meet the need that you're looking for. So thank you once again for tuning in. Do check out our Facebook page, check out also our videos on YouTube. There's plenty for you to see. So until the next episode, thank you so much. Murakoze and see you soon. <laughs>